All right, now, so when I say people, you say power. People. Power. People. Power. When I say people, you say power. People. Power. People. Power. Welcome, everyone. My name is Darren Matt. I'm co-director at Freedom Agenda. And like I was mentioned, I experienced Rikers Island firsthand as a teenager when the population was over 20,000 people detained there. Today, the population has decreased significantly, but at the same time, the human rights atrocities, the suffering, and the death has exacerbated. We know what the problem is, Rikers itself. Rikers Island cannot be reformed. Rikers cannot be fixed. The only solution for Rikers Island is closure. And there's a plan set, led by survivors of Rikers Island, their family members, allies and supporters that put in motion the call to shut down the last penal colony in the U.S. And we need to move forward with that plan. We need to accelerate that plan through decarceration, through decarceration and through investments in communities that have been historically under-resourced, historically criminalized and incarcerated on a mass level. So we want, so today, the Board of Correction is going to have a hearing, and we're going to hear things that we already know. We're going to hear things that people who have experienced the suffering and the death that's taken place on Rikers Island. So we need to move forward with this plan. We need to re reduce the harm that's occurring there, and we also need to make the strategic investment in the communities that have been underinvested. I'm a member of the Commission of the Community Reinvestment Closing Rikers Island. I'm on the Youth Subcommittee, and in March, we released a report on the recommendations of how we can make investments in communities throughout New York City in order to close the pipeline to incarceration. And the, and the, and the city needs to adapt that plan, put that plan into motion so we can stop sending people to what is basically has become a death sentence for too many New Yorkers. So when I say people, you say power. People. Power. People. Power. We need people power. Everyone should join an organization that's working towards this goal for community safety to, to, to end this the suffering and death that's happened on the Rikers because we can't do it alone. It's going to take people power. Thank you. And people lives are at stake. Decarcerate, decarcerate. When people lives are at stake. Decarcerate, decarcerate. When people lives are at stake. Decarcerate, decarcerate. Darren, thank you so much. And you know, yesterday the Board of Correction released a report which really said what we all know: Rikers is not safe for anyone. It cannot be made safe for anyone. And so, decarceration must be the first priority. Our next speaker is a fierce advocate and a vocal leader. I am proud to welcome Roger Clark. Woo! Also, Roger is also a member of the Halt Solitary Campaign. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What do we want? Decarceration. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Decarceration. When do we want it? Now. Yes, I also have experienced Rikers Island firsthand, and I cannot understand why there is a crisis, why, why um, elected officials is not taking care of this crisis, because everybody knows that there is a crisis on Rikers Island, and everybody must be at hand to take care of it. That means the mayor, the governor, the DA, judges, city and state lawmakers, must treat it as an extreme emergency. Every official must do everything in their power to release people, stop sending people to these deadly jails. It's not good for one person to die, much less 26 in the past year and a half or so. Um, so we must end solitary confinement and end it now. We must make sure that Everybody, everybody has a fierce chance because this is this is worse than the death penalty. 
to be to be accused of a crime and not convicted of that crime and to spend a couple of days in or, or Rikers Island and not getting the proper medical attention, not getting the proper or um, the proper things that you need and to die right there and then some of these people are killing themselves and correction officers are watching it as if it's as if it's, it's a joke or something. They they really show that they don't have no regard to human life. So let's stop this abuse. Let's come together and let's get everybody out of jail now. What do we want? Detoxification. What do we want now? And you Freedom Agenda, Nathaniel Evans. Woo! Good day, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What do we want? Decarceration. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Decarceration. When do we want it? Now. We want decarceration now. Rockets Out has destroyed many lives on a physical level, emotional level, mental health levels, and as well as spiritual levels. Has destroyed families, have destroyed communities, and are eating us alive. I actually experienced a friend actually dying in Rockets Island. Y'all know his name, Elijah Muhammad. I knew Elijah Muhammad Percy for two years straight. I fought for him hard. We went to the courts, we went to different vocational facilities, I had to find him in the streets, feed him, clothe him. He was in mental health court when he actually was sentenced to go to Rockers Island. There was no reason for him to go to Rockers Island because he had a strong history with the mental health, mental health courts. And they actually denied it, and they actually failed him, and he actually lost his life. In his 30s, with three children, with a family that loved them and support them. I talked to his aunts, I talked to his uncles in those two years to make sure that he get the care that he needed. And he actually died in the system that does not have the death penalty. You need to understand this. Rockets Island does not have the death penalty attached to it. There are no death penalty individuals in Rockets Island. So no one should be dying in Rockets Island. This is a care facility to make sure people get the proper care and the service that they need so they can move forward. This is not a death sentence. We are dying left and right. We are, we are followed into a political agenda. And this political agenda is tearing us up. It is not giving us what we need. You know, people saying that we need, you know, justice in our society. So they use Rockets Island, they use other penal systems to bring forth this justice. But when these individuals come back into our communities, they don't come back with justice. They don't come back with hope. They don't come back with faith. They don't come back with love. And they don't come back with purpose. So what is the point of these systems if they're not coming back with the tools and the resources they need to rebuild their communities and to actually rebuild their families and to find themselves in a place of love and understanding our societies? We have to do better. We have to shut down these systems that are taking our lives Every last one of them. Not one of us should be able to stand, and we're not dealing with the right political politics. We're not dealing with the right social justice platforms, and the leaders are not on the front lines to bring forth these changes. We are not inside these rooms, and we have actually experienced these things firsthand. I've been on Rockets Island many times. I know about the horrors of Rockets Island surviving being jumped by 20 people at one time fighting over a phone. I know about this. Not having hot water. Individuals trying to get you to do things for them that you're not supposed to do for them. Trying to take advantage of you and destroy your life. I've been there. I went worse this on my worst enemy. This is not a game. This is not a sport. And we need to shut it down when? Yeah. Shut it down when? Yeah. Peace and blessings to everyone. When people's lives are at stake, Decarcerate! Decarcerate!
When people lives are at stake, decarcerate, decarcerate. When people lives are at stake, decarcerate, decarcerate. Thank you so much, Nathaniel. It is beyond frustrating that we have to come out time and time again to tell these horror stories. Nearly 30 people have died in DOC custody since last year. And yet Mayor Eric Adams has failed to appropriately address this human rights crisis that is Rikers Island. But there are electors who have stepped up. We applaud City Council Speaker Adrian Adams, who voiced her support for the bill to end solitary confinement yesterday. Yes. As she said, New York City is better than solitary confinement. And we will be looking to the city council at next week's hearing to make sure they make good on that. And so our next speaker is someone who is well versed at holding electors accountable and not mincing their words and being a fierce advocate for everything we are speaking about right now. So I would like to welcome Dr. V, a member of Jail's Action Coalition. Get up. 
every day, every tour, we're going to be out here in their ass because our lives depend on it. At any given moment, any one of us could be arrested. And you are not afforded your day in court. You will not maybe even make it to court. Imagine that people sit every day on Rikers with no access to the lawyers, to court, to their loved ones. Why? Because we're not doing enough. And, and you know what? I'm going to hold y'all all accountable too. Because y'all show up when someone died. But when we try to give you a story to raise awareness, it does, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. How many people have not died in Rikers but go home injured, go home damaged? 77% of the women in Rikers right now go in being a victim of survival, let me say, of sexual assault in their community. We don't address that trauma. We re-traumatize them. Yes. I have invisible illnesses after my emergency brain surgery. I always say that on the record because people like me are behind the wall. If I miss an infusion, I die. I can't be at the mercy of an officer. How many people have invisible disabilities behind the walls? And Eric Adams this year had the audacity to, to put deaths as where well, they had pre-existing conditions. How dare you? The devil in the flesh. We have to do better. We have to step up. And we all have a responsibility from the organizers to the media to the board of corrections to the mayor to the commissioner. We all have a part in this. They are our community members. Peace and blessings. today for everybody to take away is people. There are people on Rikers Island. Not inmates, not yes. convicts, yes. not criminals. Yes. Right? People are on Rikers Island. I was on Rikers Island. And no matter what year somebody was on Rikers Island, there's always been the same stuff. Deaths. People are dying. Right? People can, anybody can be accused of a crime. Anybody, you can be, you can be accused of a crime. You could, you could, anybody. But we are human beings, we need our day, we need our day in court, right? We need to say that the justice system is doing something. And what it's doing right now is turning a blind eye to what's happening on Rikers Island. Is that right? That's right. Is that right? That's right. I spent my time on Rikers Island. Like the brother said, he touched me when he said, you know, he got jumped by 20 people. I have my fair share of my heartaches on Rikers Island. It's not easy, right? It's not easy. How many times I've heard reform Rikers Island? Let's fix Rikers Island. Let's do this, let's do that. Let's get more officers, let's do that. But we already did that. That does not work. It does not work. Rikers Island needs to be shut down. The buildings need to be crumbled down. The boat needs to be sank. And we need a new plan. We need the borough based plan to be pushed. And we need everybody safe. That's the only way safety is going to happen in our community. Why? Because we're taking over this, right? We're leading this narrative, right? All the people who are there, the people who have been affected, right? So the key word today that I want everybody to walk away with is that everybody on Rikers Island is a human being, is a person. People who are working there, not just the, not just the officers. We want to think that just the officers are, 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 are human beings and everybody else are, isn't. No, everybody on Rikers Island, the nurses, right? The people who are accused of the crime, who's detained there. They are human beings. They are people. And look. These were people, Deshaun Carter, hey. Emmanuel Sullivan, okay. Annabelle Carrasquillo, Albert Drive. These are all human beings. They're not cattle. Right. They're not animals. Yes. Right? They was accused of a crime, and they all died before their day in 
ain't caught. But if you let the mayor call it, everybody's in there for something heinous. Right? A few weeks ago, he said what? What'd he say? He said everybody that's on Rikers Island didn't just steal it up. Right? I come here and I tell you this. Sorry for my language, but that's bullshit, Mayor. Yes. That is so bullshit. Stop fear mongering the people. Stop scaring my community. There are people on Rikers Island, and that's what we need to always keep in mind. It's my brother, my sister, your cousin, your uncle, your niece, your nephew, your niece, your son, your daughter. Anybody, any one of us could go on Rikers Island, and any one of us could feel the trauma of Rikers Island, whether we get convicted or whether we get found innocent and we come home, right? It messes with you. It messes with your head. Trust me, I've been there. You do not want to go there. I don't care for the people who, who, who's work. I don't care if you want to go in there to volunteer. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there because as soon as you just like get to that bridge, that you could sense, you could, I, I'm sorry, man. It's so crazy that we have to come here every single week, every single month, and say the same thing. Right. Mayor Adams, when is it going to stop? When are you going to step up and do something? Yes. Shut Rikers Island down now! Now! Yeah. 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 What do we want? Decarceration! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Decarceration! When do we want it? Now! Yeah. 
What do we want? Decarceration. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Decarceration. When do we want it? Now. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Solomon Acevedo. I'm the Deputy Public Advocate for Justice, Health, Equity, and Safety in the Office of the New York City Public Advocate underneath the Honorable Jumani D. Williams. We couldn't be here today, but I'm here to speak on his behalf to support what we need today, which is decarceration. I'd like to thank the BOC for releasing a report in a timely manner to allow us to see really the things that are happening to human beings right here on New York City, in New York City. And yet, we have yet to take action and hold the proper channels accountable. Now, yesterday, the Speaker of City Council, Adrian Adams, st stood out in support of a bill to end solitary confinement in New York City. I'd like to thank the Speaker for doing that. And now it's up to our New York City Mayor to get behind what everybody wants, which is to humanize people and change the culture of what's happening to people who are detained in New York City awaiting trial. Not everybody who is on Rikers Island needs to be there. And in fact, there's a population on Rikers Island who shouldn't be there at all. And if we really, really want to look at the incidents of violence that occur, both for people who are incarcerated and both for the people who work there, we need to look at the mistreatment of people who have serious mental health issues. Yes. It's abusive to treat a person as if they don't have limitations, like they are disobeying you or what's the word I want to use? Like when people who are in corrections are, are, are talking about the ways in which they engage people who have serious mental health issues. They're engaging them as if a person was operating with a, a, a regular way of processing information. And that's not happening. And then we're putting these people on television, scapegoating them, saying, look at the, the irrational things they're doing, throwing feces on people, throwing urine on people. Why do you think they would do that? Would someone who was healthy in their heart and mind do that? No. But would we isolate those people, beat those people, let those people die in front of our eyes? Would we and still consider ourselves human? I don't think we would. So we need decarceration. And it's not because we want to do what our, our, our federal government and our states did by letting people who have mental illness out into the streets without any support. No, it's because we want to filter out the people who don't need to be there. So we can focus on the people who need support in a deep therapeutic level. There's a problem. Supportive housing can support people who have serious mental illness. So if you people here who don't want new jails in Chinatown want a solution, let's get real therapeutic support for the 1,100 to 1,500 people who are without families, and without any kind of agencies to speak on their behalf and no one to support them. And if we want to keep scapegoating these people, and I don't want to call them these people are harmed, most traumatized New Yorkers. You want to keep scapegoating them and putting them on camera and, and use them as an excuse to put more young, innocent black and brown people in jail. Then shame on our city, shame on us as human beings if we don't speak up about it and say something about it. So there's a veto proof majority for that bill to end solitary confinement in New York City, now made even stronger by our city council speaker. So now, we need the mayor, the commissioner, all these corrections officers who are talking about how traumatizing it is to work there. Well, maybe we should just disband the workforce and start over. Find a way to make those people maybe retire early, get them therapeutic interventions too. Because if we didn't know, law enforcement and domestic violence are intimately linked. We all need healing. These officers don't want to be there either. Yes. 
They're asking for tools of torture to help them cope with their fear. That is a mark of their own trauma. So what, what do we need? We need to get them out of that environment too. Get everybody out of that environment. So what do we want? Decarceration. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Decarceration. When do we want it? Now. If we don't get it. Shut it down. If we don't get it. Shut it down. If we don't get it. Shut it down. Thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. As I mentioned before, we will be testifying before the Board of Correction. Please join us if you can. It has been an honor to fight alongside each and every one of you. I will close with the words of Amir Burnett, a vocal member who is currently detained on Rikers Island. He won't be able to testify today because he has a court appearance. He said, I don't want to die here on Rikers. It is a place where you want to hurt yourself or others. We are left unsupervised for hours on end. We are being manipulated into acts of violence while the CEOs responsible cover it up. This has been going on for decades and it won't end until Rikers ends. Thank you. What do we want? Decarceration. Now! When people lives are at stake, wait, 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 wait. When people lives are at stake, decarcerate, decarcerate. When people lives are at stake, decarcerate, decarcerate. When people lives are at stake, decarcerate, decarcerate. When human rights are under attack, what do we do? Shut the 